Hi, my Zephyr Night Stars. And today I'm reading Chapter 2 of Starting Over. It's a typical day I missed last week. But I'm back this week because I had death in my family last week. So I'm back this week. And it's called A Typical Day. And this is Chapter 2, Ripped Out from Under Me. Okay, you know, her husband was treating her bad, and her kids are treating her bad in the last chapter. So now we're going to read more about the second chapter about, you know, the same things going on and such and such. Okay, I can't stop the giddy, love-struck smile on my face from spreading again. Craig texted me three hours ago, invite me out for a dinner date. Yay! Maybe it's getting better, you guys. Okay. Tonight at the restaurant where we celebrated our 10th anniversary. So he invited them out to dinner at the same restaurant where they celebrated their 10th anniversary. It was the last thing I expected after our disagreement yesterday morning. Oh, you want to take me out to eat? And you just slammed the door yesterday and... Oh, you were in a rage when you left from home. Okay. It's been ages since we've been out on a date, and I can't stop the happiness from running through my body. Oh, we're going out and celebrating our anniversary. It's our anniversary. Okay. Okay. For years, the romantic aspect of our relationship has dwindled, and we're running on empty. Craig had been withdrawn and a little cold towards me about a year or two. Out of nowhere, he started treating me like I was a nuisance and didn't hide how he felt about me. He didn't hide it from our children, and that completely changed the way they interacted with me. Once the respect was gone, it was hard to regain it. But this gave me hope. And I'll take that over nothing any day. This would help us as a family, and I was ecstatic over it. I prepped dinner for the kids and stuck it in the fridge with a note. Then went upstairs to start my beauty process. Hey. I took my scarf off and winced it. At the state of my hair, my cornrows were frizzy and old. It's honestly been a while since I've styled my hair. So, I have my scars of my go-to style. Throw the scarf on the ear. That's my go-to. I can't do anything with this. I grumble. I can't do anything with this. I twist my mouth and run my fingers over my head. Maybe I can make it to a salon. Maybe I can make it to a salon. I look at the time, and I have more than enough time. I take the braids out and stick my hair into a puff. Ooh, let me put it in the puff, girl, so I can go down here to the salon. Okay, I slip into some jeans and an old T-shirt. It's a little tight in the chest area, but that's fine. Craig gonna love it. It's fine. Okay, I slip into some flip flops and head to the minivan. Craig drove his, his um Craig drove his Range Rover that I wasn't allowed to touch. I can't even touch his Range Rover. Oh no, baby, let me put my little hands on that Range Rover. Craig gonna ooh ooh Craig. Baby, don't touch my Range Rover. You just ride in a little minivan coupe. Go on over there in a little Ford or a little Toyota minivan and sport that. But don't touch my Range Rover, baby. I searched Google and found a salon that caters to natural hair. It takes me 30 minutes to get there. It's in a cute shopping center I had never been to. Oh, I'm so surprised. I'm happy. Craig and I are going on a date. Okay. I passed the pottery shop, a farmer's market, several boutiques, and a coffee shop. The salon was the last shop on the strip. It's pink. It's red. 
awning stands out from the black and beiges that surround it. I park and I rush inside. I called ahead and luckily they could take me. Once I stepped inside, the sound of laughter and low R&B music hits my ears. It smells like cocoa butter and castor oil inside. The chairs in the waiting area are packed with customers. I walk up to the receptionist. She has coffee colored skin and a gold scarf wrapped around her head with braids hanging out the back. How may I help you? She asks, a smile spreading on her red stained lips. I caught in about styling my natural hair. My name is Joy. She chewed the cap of a pen as she typed on the MacBook in front of her. Yep, Joy, I have you down for a wash and a silk press. That'll be $60. I hand her my card and in seconds she hands it back to me. She leads me back to the washing station where a woman named Stacy is waiting for me. Do you offer any other services? I ask Stacy as she wets my hair. We have full body waxing and eyebrow waxing. I think about it and then about what tonight could lead to. It's been a while since Craig and I have been intimate, but tonight would be great to enjoy one another. I tell Stacy that I would like to get the works and she leaves for about Three minutes before coming back, let me know that after my hair is pressed, then well, my waxes will be ready. My hair is washed and blow dried before it's pressed. The final product won't be seen until I have to get ready for the dates. The waxing was extremely painful, especially when it got to my bajayjay and my bubble hole. I thought I was going to scream bloody murder. I thought I was going to scream bloody murder. Ooh, that hurt it. Ooh. <laughs> there we are. Before heading, I stopped at the boutique down the street, which was black owned. I found the prettiest red silk cowl necklace with a slit up to my thigh. Baby, I just read that wrong. Excuse me, I read it wrong. I read it wrong. Excuse me. Before heading, I stopped at the boutique down the street, which was black owned. I found the prettiest red silk collar neck dress with a slit up to my thigh. I felt so gorgeous and wanted it, so I bought it for me and my husband. Baby. By the time I got home, it was 2.30 and the kids would be getting off their buses soon. I made them a quick fruit bowl to snack on as I anxiously waited for the time to roll down. Francine stood next to her mimicking sister's dance. They looked so much like me when I was younger, but they don't see it. Excuse me. They claim they look like their father. I got my hair done. I smiled, pushing two water bottles across them. It's about time. The scars were getting a little plantation like Eva laugh. <laughs> it's about time because they were them scars was getting a little plantation like mom. <laughs> Inappropriate response, Eva. I shot back. She rolled her eyes. Why you get your hair done anyway? It's not like you ever do anything. Such a smart mouth. I will never talk to my mother the way she talks to me. Your father and I are going out to dinner tonight. I hum happily. Eva's eyes widened as she exchanged a look with Francine. Really? Francine gaped. Yes. What's so hard to believe about that? I ask. Nothing, nothing at all. Eva blurted out. She took her sister's wrist and pulled her upstairs. Bizarre. With CJ playing his video games and the girls sequestering, sequestering, sequestering. I hope I'm saying the word right. 
S E Q U E S T U R N G themselves sequestering. With CJ playing his video games and the girls sequestering themselves in their rooms, the house was quiet. And before I knew it, it was time to get ready. I did an okay job on my makeup, keeping it simple because that's all I knew how to do. I rubbed my body down with all free lotion and slipped into my dress. Uh, uh, don't hate y'all haters. I'm beautiful. Don't hate baby. I'm beautiful. I'm missing one nail and I'm beautiful. <laughs> I'm proud for um I'm proud for Joy. Cause she's probably her and her husband are probably trying to I hope they're trying to click click, you know, back together, you know, with all of this going on, you know. Okay. I combed my hair out and shook it out so that it rested a little past my shoulder blades. Lastly, I put my stilettos on. Baby, she's the one stilettos. Oh, stilettos. Mm -hmm. I look so good. I said, twirling in the mirror. In the mirror, in the mirror, in the mirror. I saw Eva that dinner was in the fridge and not some weight up. <laughs> the horn outside honked and I knew it was Craig outside. I heard outside and into the passenger seat. Excuse me. I've been in this car about five times, and each time I revel in the fact that his scent surrounds me. Oh, nothing like a good smelling man, baby. Was, oh, nothing like a good smelling man with a gentle touch. Oh. Okay, back to the story. Okay. Hey, honey. I beam, leaning over to kiss him. But he leans away. Hey, honey. I had garlic shrimp for lunch, he explains, pulling down the driveway. Bastard. You had garlic shrimp for lunch. You couldn't gargle after lunch. You know we were going on a date while you couldn't gargle. Your wife wants a kiss, Craig. You can't give your wife a kiss, Craig, because you had garlic shrimp for lunch. Really, Craig? That's a sad, pitiful as excuse for a man. When you can't give your wife a kiss because you ate garlic shrimp for lunch. I would have left your shrimp ass in that car and went back into my damn house. Okay. Okay. Um, how was your day, Craig? Clicking my seatbelt on. I didn't even know he was working on a big case. Watch it. My day was great. I want a big case today. He said, absent Molly. Great. I want a big case today. I didn't even know he was working on a big case. It's like I know nothing about him anymore. He used to willingly talk to him about his day. Now it's like pulling teeth, you know. Who was the client? Don't worry about it, he muttered. Don't worry about it. And dismissed. We ride in silence and I start to wonder why did he invite me out? If he has no interest in talking to me. We reach the restaurant and the valet takes the car. Craig doesn't wait for me to enter the restaurant. I rush behind him and grab the door before it closed on me. The restaurant was just as beautiful as it was the last time we were there. The walls are painted a deep red with yellow. Yo the walls are painted a deep red with low yellow lights with a live video violin player performing in the corner. Craig is already walking through the restaurant and as, as I try to follow him, the hostess jumps in front of me. Her blonde bras come together in confusion as she looks at me like I'm a problem she has to solve. 
Excuse me, how can I help you? She asks, looking down her nose at me. Oh, that's my husband. I laugh, pointing at Craig's retreating figure. Oh, really? I've seen Mr. Bithorn here several times, and you have never been with him. She retorted. I'm sure the shot could see. I'm sure the shot could be seen on my face. I doubt she's lying. So that brings up the question of who is he coming here with? Just call him back and he'll tell you. I sighed. I rub, I rub my hands up and down my arms, trying to fight the nervous trembles running through my mind. It was probably just the client he was meeting with, nothing more, nothing less. Baby, this is serious. Baby, I'm speechless. She rolls her eyes and calls out to Craig, who stops in his tracks and turns around. This woman claims to be a wife, she said, a smug smirk on her thin lips. She is my wife, Craig said in a monotone voice. The host brows rose and shocked as her face turned an ugly red. For a brief second, a look of pity entered her eyes before she rumbled out an apology. I gave her a small smile and followed Craig to a corner table. He pulls a chair out for me and sits across from me. He stares at me with dead eyes and reaches across the table to take my hand in his. For as long as I've been with Craig, his hands have always been softer than mine. He stares at me with dead eyes and reaches across the table to my hand in his. For as long as I've been with Craig in his hands, I've always been something to man. Y'all, my heart just dropped. Baby, when I read, when I just glanced at this next sentence, my heart just drop in my panties. My heart just dropped in my panties, you guys. Baby, let me tell you, honey. This is, this is sad right here, y'all. I'm serious. I'm a woman. I'm a female. I'm like, I went through all this and this is what you about to tell me, y'all. He about to tell her this. He really about to tell her this story. He about to tell her this. This, ooh, baby. I want to be, ooh, Lord. Ooh. Let me read this last sentence again before I read this next sentence. Y'all, ooh. He stares at me with dead eyes and reaches across the table to take my hand in his. For as long as I've been with Craig, his hands has always been softer than mine. Why his hand is in my hand? I'm on a divorce. He said. Replay two. I want a divorce. He said. Replay three. I want a divorce. He said. Baby, 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 baby. A short laugh escaped my mouth as I registered his words. His sister humor has definitely changed over the years because this is definitely dark humor. His beard doesn't part into a smile, nor does he laugh. I tilt my head. Waiting for the punchline, but it never comes. Oh, are you serious? I ask. A ball of nerves form into my stomach and tightens into a knot. I try to put my hands away, but he won't let me go. Our relationship has grown old and cold, and there's no passion between us. Craig said. Slipping his hands from mine. 
Is this about yesterday and the coffee? I can't believe this. This can't possibly be real. I, I dragged the chair closer to the table and propped my elbow on the table. One of my other hands with my hair. Craig shook his head, no. I haven't been happy in a while. Since when and why until the point where you want a divorce to tell me when it could have been fixed? Okay. But maybe we can fix this. I try to reason with him. No. It's time for us to live separate lives. You'll be happy that way. This is crazy. Live separate lives. I've lived with this man for over a decade and carried our children. Then after I carried the kids, I raised them, gave them my life for him and the kids. No, no, no. This isn't happening, and I'm not going to let it happen. I shrugged, shaking my head. This isn't real. Craig angled his head up and looked down at me. A look of disgust and anger struck his face. It's happening, and the sooner you accept this, the easier it will be for me and the kids and yourself. No, you're not even going to do it for the kids and for me. It's all about you, I scoffed. You're not even going to do it for the kids and for me. It's all about you, Craig. Craig shook his head and leaned back in his seat. And to spring this up on me here, all the places is just crazy. The place where we celebrated our anniversary, I smacked my hands on the table. I couldn't care less about the attention I'm drawing toward us. Good. Maybe I won't have a chance to hear the returning here without being embarrassed or reminded tonight enough the marriage is over stop fighting for something that's been dead for years he whips it back fervently defeats rolled through me and i slumped in my chair as tears rolled down my face he ripped the world out from under me My Jesus. I mean, this man has no remorse. He had no remorse. He had no remorse for this lady, you guys. None whatsoever. No kind of remorse. The mother of your kids. Are you going to bring us to the restaurant? We all celebrated y'all anniversary for it. Y'all celebrated y'all anniversary here at this place for over a decade. And you give her this kind of treatment? That is so wrong. Well, you guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this story. This is chapter two I just read. I read chapter one two weeks ago. I read chapter two this week. And I read chapter three next week if nothing comes along. But if something comes along, I read it the next Tuesday. But today I read chapter two of Starting Over a Typical Day. Okay. I hope you guys enjoy the story. I hope you enjoy I hope you guys really enjoy. You have to excuse the words because I didn't pre-read the story. I read the story for the first time with you guys. I never pre-read the story. It wasn't pre-read, so some of the words I stumbled upon, so I read the story with you guys. So you have to excuse me or forgive me for the some of the words that were incorrectly read or whatever. Just bear with me, you know. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Share, share, share this video with everyone. Somebody might be going, somebody might be going through the same situation or the same problem. They might need to hear this. So share this with your friends, your family, whoever. And subscribe to my channel. If you don't subscribe to my channel, just keep on until I put out some good content. Because this content might not be good for you. It might not be great for you. But until, you know, just continue reading, like and dislike. It doesn't matter. Comment, whatever, you know. So if you subscribe, you subscribe. You don't, you know, it's up to you. You have your own right. I'm not forcing anybody to subscribe. But if you like the content, then you can subscribe. So, I really enjoy this story, y'all. I'm really, and this is chapter three. I wanted to read chapter three to y'all, but it's going to take us so much time. So, 
next Tuesday, if, if it's the Lord's will, we're going to read chapter 3. Chapter 3 is going to be awesome. You know, despite of the situation of what's going on, but we are, this is everyday lives. People are really living, you know. We are all living in situations like this. And I may not be the same particular situation, but we all are going through things with our spouse, our baby daddy, our boyfriend, our husband. You know, even, you never know. We all can relate to this story. We all can relate to this story right here. So, you all be blessed. Have a good day. Have a good night. Pray for you. I pray for you. You pray for me. We pray for each other. I love you guys. And y'all be blessed. Stars. Have a good night.